Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix online meeting number 100. That's a pretty cool number. I don't know. It's like, it feels like we've actually accomplished something. Not that we haven't been doing work all along, but 100 feels like, wow, we've been here for a while. Never mind all the other years that we've been here. Anyway, uh, this is the first meeting after two weeks. Uh, we had some nice discussion on the mailing list since we had some excitement this week, which is unfortunate, but that's the way it goes. We'll talk about it in a minute. Um, so this is March 8th, and we're going to go ahead and roll on. As always, these meetings are recorded for the people that aren't able to join us in person. What are we talking about today? We're going to do an update on Wix 10.3, which got a little more interesting, as I mentioned, or I guess that's what I mentioned. Uh, that's the, also we'll talk about the Wix 3.11 release, uh, because it's time, hopefully. We need to kind of decide where we're going to all that. And then we'll do our usual triage, and then we'll do questions and comments at the end. All right, without further ado, 3.10.3. Uh, there's a bug fixed, all that kind of stuff. Stuff is the same. The branch will be committed, created very soon. I know I've said that for about a month, but I actually am going to get that taken care of. Uh, the WinForms GDI failure uh, has moved forward. The .NET Framework team, the WinForms team, whoever they are, basically forwarded it along to the GDI Plus and said, here, uh, these guys are the problems. I'm like, great. Hopefully we can get to the root of it. They came back with a very interesting answer that there is this funny DLL in between them that they, for some reason, were going through to read reg keys, and that seemed to be the DLL that was causing problems uh, due to the way that we're doing the set default DLL directories. And I was like, okay, that's interesting. What DLL would that be? And they said it was advapi32.dll. And I was like, well, yeah, that's the DLL that is publicly presented as the DLL that you asked for reg keys for. So I'm not exactly sure what they were talking about. I thought for a minute that they were just kind of messing with us. Um, and they came back and said, no, 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 we're not. You Can you try this? And I've been really busy since then. So uh, I guess there's something for us to try. But I was really confused by their initial answers. But hey, we got an answer. So uh, we'll go from there, even though it seemed like a joke. Um, and then the excitement of the week is that uh, attached containers in bundles don't work when doing a bundle update, uh, which is very unfortunate. But thank you to Jacob and anybody else that kind of jumped in and helped push that along. Um, and it looks like Sean has gone about and done a pull request over the weekend, which is super duper cool. So we'll go look at that as the pull request this week. Surprise, surprise. Hopefully that's not too surprising. So anyway, 323 is getting a little more interesting, which is unfortunate. Um, and this is kind of the way it goes. But hey, at least we're making progress on all fronts. That's about all I got right now. Um, and nobody's particularly screaming, which means I'm afraid they're probably all hanging out on uh, pre 3102 and don't have the security fix. But uh, we need to get the G WinForms GDI Plus, and if this update thing isn't horrible, then we should, of course, slip it in, especially since we already have a fix for it and we'll get it verified and all that kind of good stuff in the time that it takes us to get an answer from GDI Plus team. So, hey, tally ho, here we go. Hopefully, we get to an answer in a minute. And I totally didn't mean to rhyme that. Um, Bob, 311 release. Your deal. All right. Uh, so, you know, we've been doing the 3X releases for a few years now, and and every time there's been uh, something that pushes us toward a release. Um, I want to kind of lay the groundwork for 3.11, what that what that means, um, and then kind of you know talk about what that means as far as what goes into 3.11, and and even going further, what goes into uh, 3.x in general. Um, so this is all variable. It's up to us to decide, you know, when 3.11 ships and what goes into it. Um, just to draw a line in the sand, I'm going to propose that 3.11 is another release that we ship in support of the next version of Visual Studio. Um, so whatever you know, Visual Studio version 15 turns into, if it's you know, Visual Studio 2016 or 2017, that's what 3X is about. 3.11. That's the, the theme. Sorry, yes, 3.11. Um, looking at what we've done so far in 3.11, there's a bunch of little things, but I don't see anything that's really compelling 
to say, okay, well, now we need to, you know, we need to do all the work that we do in order to ship a release. And and I don't have any other themes. Nothing else comes to mind. It's like, you know, um, we're not getting, again, we're getting a, a few little changes, mostly, you know, features, a couple bug fixes, but nothing in the quantity that says, oh, well, you know, we have, I don't know, 50 bug fixes, so we should do a release to, to get those out there in a, you know, production-ready release. Um, and and kind of looking forward, it's like, well, what what else are we? What, what what other reasons are we going to ship 3x releases? And I think that that we have kind of come down to it over the past couple of releases. It's been Visual Studio support that has really you know kind of moved the needle. Those supporting you know Visual Studio 2013 and 2015 and now 20 whatever. Um, that's that's pretty much what we're doing in 3x these days um, so that kind of leads into the next bullet point which is what goes into 311 well obviously support for the next version of Visual Studio um, and I want to say that not much else goes in uh, you know 311 uh, you know again if it ships you know this year or next year or whenever um, we're, we're, we have been over the past release or so been kind of butting up against Wix 4, um, where, you know, the time that people spend in Wix 3X is time taken away from time spent in Wix 4. And long term, I don't, you know, is, but there aren't enough people working in Wix to, you know, have multiple actively maintained branches. Um, and what we've seen, and it's something even I am guilty of, is that people start work in, or do work in 3X and don't do the same work in 4. So we have this problem where, where well, Sean has volunteered a couple of times, though I don't think he enjoys it all that much, uh, to cherry pick changes from 3X uh, back into 4 to get them you know, back on, on an even footing. Um, but that's, again, it's just it's time spent that if we were more focused on a single release, uh, we wouldn't have to spend that time. Um, so what goes into 3.11? I want to say not much more than uh, support for Visual Studio v15. Um, this is kind of this is where I'm what I'm suggesting just from my perspective of of you know my own time spent in 3x versus 4o um, I would like to do more work in 4o and over the the past couple of releases it's been it's been tough uh, obviously you know what's 3102 and 3103 you know those are things we have to do to support um, you know the existing existing release and there's nothing we can do about that we have to do that yeah, and they're just killing me right now but yeah well it, yeah yeah and that's that's one of, <laughs> it's one of those things it's like you know we have um it, there's a finite amount of time you know no matter no matter how it's put together there's a fin finite amount of time that that people can spend working on wix and um yeah definitely you know the security release has been a, a serious problem um you know, uh, Jacob and Sean have worked on post 3.10.2 bugs that you know, we know we need to get into 3.10.3. It's like, yeah, we have to do that, but it's a clear, it's a clear sign that we have this problem of, of uh, divided attention. So over the past couple of releases, we've been you know, kind of slowing down what we do in, th in 3.x, and I think we're at the point now where it's time to, to be very critical about what we take. Um, you know, you look at the the pull requests in 3x, a lot of good stuff, and we can look at you know each one. I, I don't think that we're not at the point where we're going to say, well, only bug fixes go in, because truthfully, we don't get a, a lot of bug fixes. Um, so, and of course, you know, you can absolutely consider Visual Studio support to be a feature, 
And if we're saying that that's kind of the motivating factor behind a release, then obviously we're going to take some features. But I think it's time to start ramping down pretty hard. So when do we put something in the pull request issue, temp the pull request template that says, uh, if this is a feature, go here instead? Well, go we don't have a pull request template. I'm um, saying, when do we create a template that yeah, I know. in three that says, uh, no, go put this in four? Bug fix, okay. Feature, no, go put it in four. Well, like I said, I don't think we, we can be absolute. Not quite. Okay. Um, because, well, just because, you know, like I said, you know, Visual Studio support is a is a feature. Um, so as long as we're still shipping 3x, you know, and that's a that's another question. You know, at what point do we say, okay, you know, 3x is done. The world is now four. And the world is now four. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, to do that, we need to get four to. A a place that's going so. Yep, absolutely. And and again, <laughs> time time we spend in the three act. Yes. You this see is, the problem. This is the, the downward spiral kind of problem here we have. Well, that's like I said. I I want to I want to ramp down hard. So yeah, I think we should have a pull request template in three that says you know, uh, before you do well at that point it's probably too late. But you know before you do any work, talk about this issue in Wix devs because you know. It's it's going to require you know a really convincing story, and or a bribe you know I'll put that out there, <laughs> um, for for features to get in. Well, I, I like um, Sean's idea of the if it's a feature request, please put it in four first. Right? Or well, yeah, I don't link to your four pull request. You must link to your pull request for four. I I, I think it's fine as long as they're 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 there simultaneously or you know plus or minus an hour or so. Um, sure. Well, before we review it, before we'll take it, it'll be like, yeah, no link. Yeah, it, no pull request. Yep. I think that's I think that's the way to go. Okay. Um, we have our yeah. first use of a pull request template. Yeah, I guess we do. Um, so yeah, I, basically, I want to make sure that as we go through, uh, as anyone goes through, features that go in have to get triaged, and I think in general that's a good idea. I mean. You know, we've kind of treated it as as open season, and that's probably that's probably not good for either 3x, you know, keeping 3x stable, or truthfully even 4o. It's like we should we should talk about this stuff. True. All right. So what's the answer here right now? The answer is we're looking at Visual Studio V next, whatever the next version is, and. Mm -hmm. Uh, any issues with that, I guess, is what it comes down to. That's what 3.11 is about. I think that's right. All right. And then we just, again, we take a very hard look at, at anything else. Okay. Anybody have issues so, with some that? Some stuff makes sense. You know, like, like you know, we have a pull request pending, uh, yeah, assignment agreement problems uh, for .NET 461. Right. Well, that's that's almost Dev 15 or whatever Visual Studio Next version well, of Visual Studio will be almost, right? No. Oh, no, 461's no. already out. 461's <laughs> out, yeah. 461 uh, is out, so. Yeah, all right. So, so that, that's one where I'm like, okay, well, we need to review it, but I'd be hard-pressed to say it's a bad thing, you know. So I just, basically, I want everyone, I want us all to go through um, the, the, the process of, of talking about it as a group, you know, right. and... Yep. Okay. So I'm going through the comments here. So Jacob brings up a point. I want, want to get patching working in four because that's the big thing that I think is broken in the big migration work, and I'd like to get back to that too. And the thing that's really preventing most of that work from happening is um, the uh, all the time I'm spending in 3.10x <laughs> to keep pushing these releases and running them wrong and hunting down this GDI thing. So I'd like to get that gone, but can't exactly pull away from it until we get to the end of it. Um, uh, so anyway, so I'm, I'm with you on that, Jacob. I would like to be focused on four. In fact, I've said that several times, and each time I keep getting pulled back into 310 something or other, which is frustrating, but I don't, I haven't been 
not willing to give up on 310 and say, ah, forget it, security release, forget it. <laughs> or at least I guess I haven't said, ah, wind forms, don't use that. Um, although I got pretty close, given yeah. that those guys were responding for a while. I was like, look, if you guys yeah. don't care about wind forms, I don't care about wind forms. I'll tell people to go use something else, but that doesn't help anybody. So here we are still doing battle over trying to get them to figure out what exactly is going wrong so we could try to do a workaround. It's what we're trying to get to. Anyway, and there's a lot of time wasted. I don't know. It's wasted until we come up with a solution, I guess. Um, and then it'll be like, hey, look at all that effort we put in to solve this problem. That was good. Yeah, the, the, there's still waste <laughs> is it's my problem. Yeah, well, it's not progress. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so John, as usual, is doing a sounds good, makes sense kind of things. So Heath brings up the, the issue. Are they, they've done a number of uh, things in their world that they want to try to get back into 3X so that they can um, get off of the, the crazy fork that they've maintained for themselves. Um, so are we taking those then? Because they're not related well, to anything except trying to help the Visual Studio team themselves. This is not Visual Studio support. This is <laughs> the Visual Studio team needing fixes so that they can get back somewhere. Right. And again, this is this is where I think we have to look at, you know, just look at the the issues and the pull requests and. Um, All right. So yeah. this is why you're going to say we're, we'll take features if if we want, essentially. <laughs> well, we I, I'm, I'm I'm saying yeah, it, they ha they have to pass a bar. Yeah, that's and the bar is well going higher or lower depending on how you view, you know, bars. As either limbo or eh, never mind, going for a joke didn't work. No, um, <laughs> not even a little bit. It could have, it, it could have worked, but it just, it didn't. Um, yeah, no. So then it, it comes down to, you know, is is this uh, in general a good thing? Is this useful to to other people? Is this um, uh, uh, all the all the different attributes that you can that you can judge when you're when you're judging a change. Okay. Um, yeah. So Microsoft's problems are problems, and we'll you know take that into account. Um, but it doesn't mean we're going to you know let in something crazy. Okay. So that says that we're going to look at each issue on on its own. So I think the answer is going to be there is that we're going to need issues tracking it. Um, yeah. And Heath, I think you've you've opened issues for everything. I yes. think I saw I, I saw three or four come in, which yeah. means we'll do them at triage. So, so what you're saying is we're going to look at each one individually, and we'll go from there. Yep. Um, all right. So, I think that makes 3.11 mostly clear as mud. Um, it says we're creating a line. We haven't. We haven't drawn a, a red line, not that red lines seem to stand to anything. So um, 3.11 will be, we'll take the features we think we need to take. I do think Sean's idea of creating a pull request template is probably a good idea that says, uh, if make sure that you're, have a link to Wix 4 or an explanation why this makes no sense in 4, AKA the bug fix is already in 4, right? That would be a reason not to do it in 4. Sure. Um, and then tell them to delete that text after they have appropriately responded to it, either by creating a link to their for uh, pull request or having a nice little explanation why they don't need it in for. Why it has no value in, in for. All right, well, there we go. I think we're through all of that. All right. Which I think turns us to... Da -da -da -da! triage. How about teeing that up, huh? Something like that. All right. I'd say, Bob, you're ready, but you've been talking for a while, so I'm going to assume you are. Um, safe. Safe, yes. All right. Hey, look, first thing to talk about this week. Options to duplicate director IDs. This is a, it's a very, very questionable thing that has side effects I don't like but he put it behind a command line switch, and I don't ever want to try to figure out how to document that switch as a, here's how something is useful to do, which essentially is basically allow identical rows, but only for directories due to some internal tooling that 
Heath has, and the way that they worked around the issues that it created was to allow identical directories in a thing. Um, and Wix 4 Heath, already does did, the right thing on this. Heath, is there any reason that the dash AI switch wouldn't work? We already have that anti-feature, so. Yeah, and that was created back in 2. Oh, I've yeah. been lugging around with questionable value for ever. <laughs> no. Right. Well, just, AI, yeah. The AI switch allows any, any identifiers to be duplicated. Right. Yeah? It's, it's gone in 4, right, Rob? As far as I know. I have to go double check it, but I'm pretty sure it's gone at four. And the the switch you're adding in the pull request link here needs to be would, deprecated too. Yeah, it would have to start out deprecated and wouldn't. <laughs> Which is the, the whole goofy thing about it. It's like, no, don't use this. But you just added it. Yes, we did. <laughs> Can you explain that? Mm, no, not really. Not well. Not the code you're looking for. It's basically, yeah, so they didn't. It's a narrow version of allow identical rows. It's basically allow identical rows, but only in the directory table. So catch all the other errors. Don't catch the errors that this creates. And don't mind all the interesting, weird kind of linker references you can create when you allow multiple directories to be in multiple fragments at the same time and stuff like that. I don't even... I don't even want to think about all the applications inside the linker when that, if you use this switch. It's just like, yeah. No, thanks. Right. Heath, I'm, I'm asking whether this feature is necessary. If you have the dash AI switch... Then you don't need this why, one. Why can't you just use that? What's, what's the downside? What doesn't work? Yeah, but you could have a thing that checks for the, the warnings that get spat out and say, nope, that's not allowed. Because AI will spit out warnings for all the things that are duplicated. And technically speaking, you can get already get into weird things of, you know, multi directories being defined at the same time, but uh, implications of it. Anyway. Yes, AI is an interesting workaround for this particular problem. Should we take it offline and discuss this as a as AI as a solution to this issue instead of that? If it's going to take a while to sort out. Yeah, Heath, I, I think I think we need to we need to understand why AI isn't good enough. Both of these are are, are anti features. And they AI is deprecated. The, yeah. AI well, is too but, good. <laughs> and, I mean, I, I understand what he's saying. It's like, ah, it could be directory, but there are other ways to solve that problem. So. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm. I'm not. I'm not convinced that that AI is is too too much worse than than adding this. Again, think. You know, go through the the, the motions. It starts out deprecated and is only exists for Wix 3.11, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't smell right. Well, most of the deprecations at this point are means they're deprecated in 3 and don't exist in 4. Yeah, yeah. So but I don't again, know the, it's, I don't know if things can ever disappear from 3 at this point. No, no, no. No, I'm, I'm, talking, about, I'm talking about introducing a deprecated feature. It is kind of weird. It's a little weird. Um, and... This is this is the you know here here's where we're talking about the bar. Yeah. Adding the switch seems really, really weird. And All right. I, I, I definitely want to investigate alternatives. Okay. We'll let you guys investigate alternatives off triage. Uh this one was interesting. This is not silent Bob, this is Bob Silent, which is not the Bob I'm talking to because clearly he talks. Um Except I was muted just then, so <laughs> but not by me. Um, this is about trying to allow 
before and after import before and after targets, which the C sharp projects have, I guess. C plus, they kind of have it too, and we have some level of it, but not all of it. Um, and so, I know, we, yeah. And so I had a comment of standardized on four, and right. And then Sean pointed out that C sharp have their own import before and after um, to allow this. So I, I'm generally okay with this in four um, to match what C sharp, VB, C++ do. Um, just kind of hoping they would come through common targets, but they don't. They come through their own, so that's fine. Or there's, I guess there's additional in addition to common targets. Um, do we want this in th uh, three? I'm not exactly clear what we get for this compared to the the dedicated targets file we already support. Uh, no, this is the ability to hook the targets file that we have in more places, I guess. By putting, you know, you know, install files in a particular place, if they exist, they'll get imported. More places to hook the build, basically, is what it comes down to. C Sharp, VB, C++ have them. Should Wix 3 have them? I'm still stuck on uh, – this only works if you have a magic directory inside mm -hmm. the the Wix targets directory. That's right. That's where you put it. Why? I mean, that seems – everyone's talking about, oh, we need NuGet and whatnot. So why this would you want to way around? <laughs> why would you – well, I just – I don't – I don't get it. You have to start customizing your machine images? Uh, yes, or at least installing something to the outside. It's not in, it's not in, well, it's under the MS build directory, right, Sean? That's where it looks? Or is this the one that's supposed to look next to the targets? I, I'm generally with Jacob of it's meh. Well, I'm I'm trying to understand if it's worthwhile even in four. I don't get the the use case, but it's well, yeah. So certainly, I don't. For me, the to standardize the Wix targets to have the same expectations that you get with the C sharp C plus plus targets. To me, that has that value, right? So if you knew how to customize your C sharp targets, then you can get the same thing in in Wix. That's the that's the value I get for this one. Is the consistency, okay. but that's it. Like it's purely for consistency, which you know we have the standard. We've made it through three X and honestly two this long. Or did two have MS build? Probably not. No. Um, so we made it through three this long without this standardization. And to be fair, we're not even standardized on the comma targets in three. So is it worth doing in three? I'm with Jacob. It's kind of, I'm kind of meh on it. I'm I'm meh on the feature. So I absolutely will. Yeah, thumbs down on three X. All right, so we'll not take this to 3x, and then I will think about. I think we could take it for. I, I'm I'm good with trying to be consistent with C sharp, and because it's the less surprises you have with our build process, the happier um, people will be generally. So I'm fine taking this in four, especially since we've done work in this area um, in four to so use the common targets. So I guess that's kind of where I'm at. It feels like finishing it so that we look more like the common, all the other common projects. Uh, okay, your call. All right. All right, I'm with Sean. All right, cool. So, four. Woohoo! Uh, cannot terminate process with exit code zero. Uh, da, da 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 da. The problem closes, cannot be closed with zero. Do we always kill it with some other number? Oh, the minimum is one. <laughs> that's, he, that's just in the table definition, right? Like the extension actually takes zero, but it fails. Okay. Oh, so the table definition needs to be updated. So the validation will pass. <laughs> I think it 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 will fail. It won't link because it can't set the field to zero. Oh, I don't. Yep. I didn't. I didn't think we actually checked the minimums in the linker. I, I thought we just left that. Yeah. No, I thought validation. We. I thought we left it to validation to actually enforce the min maxes. 
And as long as it's a valid number, we're okay. But anyway, all right, fair enough. Oh, it breaks the bill. All right, well, um, I don't know. <laughs> Seems minor. I could kind of see why someone would want to like, all right, terminate it, but don't terminate it with fail failure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm okay with that. It's like, yeah, okay, zero. Yeah, I'm I'm fine calling this a bug fix. All right, uh, but this needs to have a four, I bet. Yes. Okay. It does. So this is one of those that needs to have the PR template that says, have a link to four, explain why this doesn't have for four. So, all right, cool. So this needs a four, and then that will go forward. Ability to add users to performance log, add users to performance log users. Uh, had Wix account perf log users and Wix account perf log no domain. I don't even know who these people are. Okay. So what is this adding? This is updating something? The, yeah, the he, Wix this users? Is a, this is a bad title. This is the, the OS um, OS info. So it's just getting the name for them. It's for adding actually. a couple of properties, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. So this is not actually adding them to users. It's just giving the name of some magical group in Wix OS info or whatever that was. Right. Yeah, so okay. OS info custom action. So this doesn't actually add users to performance logs users. Okay. So, right. Got you. So it doesn't do what the title says. Title. Got it. This is OS info. Right. Um, and so this is just adding uh, adding these properties. Right. So this is a feature. Um, it's additive. Not going to break anybody. Arguably useful for somebody. And arguably useful. Generally useful. Generally useful, uh, sorry. It's not arguably useful, generally useful. <laughs> well, it's arguably, it's generally useful, yes. Um, so I'm okay with this in 3.11. All right. Clearly we go for four. But we need a PR for four. There we go. Keith always said he, he would do that, so that's good. Cool. Uh, set Wix custom action is not added to the install execute sequence. Found the cause. Launch conditions were scheduled too early. Well, yes, that would do it. Cool. That was easy. Right. Launching installed application burn isn't launched in the foreground. This surprises me. I thought we did this right and passed the hwind to the. Um, yeah, we do. But you know, I've I've noticed this with burn and also with other apps that you know, do similar stuff where. Even your even if you're following all the rules, it seems like focus is there? not. Yeah, yeah. Like I've I've noticed it before with um, with a burn bundle. Uh, I think a standard BA burn bundle, where focus doesn't doesn't follow. But I've also seen it again from other apps that you know, uh, like in Bur in the bundle I'm thinking of. There's a link to open the log. And or link to open a browser, and I've seen the same thing here um, with other apps. It's weird. So we put it in 3x for someone to go hunt down, see if they can come up with a better way of launching these things. Yeah, I guess. Because, all right. I don't know. I don't know what else to do. Yeah, I don't either. It's like, yeah, go hunt this. So we had two people open the same bug. I wonder if it's the same person with different names. It is. Ah, very good then. So we'll just let that one go, and we'll go to three ten two. This was the issue I was talking about earlier that was found that Jacob and others did a good job running down and hunting. And I think we have a PR for this. Oops, sorry, that wasn't the right button. Here we go down here. Oh. I think you can attach logs now, but that's okay. And yes, there's the pull request. Yeah, and we will talk about that when we do pull requests. Woohoo! So we will be taking that in 3.10.3. Do we have that milestone already? We do. Sweet. Uh, make that easy. I don't exactly know what to do with this one. Um, uh, use of element context can be down. confusing. So I don't disagree. 
uh, Element Text is really only useful in the cases in general in our world of C data when you have to use uh, expressions, even though we don't do that in the bundle as much. Right. Um, and so I guess that's the question here is we're questioning that text. Then there's the old ancient uh, question when we were designing XML back when XML was brand new. What should be the text of an element? Believe it or not, there was a point in Wix 1 where uh, the text of the element was the ID. Yeah, I've seen it. <laughs> Could you imagine that if we were still doing that? Oh my gosh, how horrible. Uh, it's not much fun. Who came up with that idea? Well, it was the the idea that the the the, the entity that this the yeah. element is its element text. Uh, clearly, that was a bad idea. And then later on, figured out what C data was and started moving things to C data that needed to be or moving the element text that needed to be C dated, C data ed, however you say that. Um, make up that word. Um, there's a word for making up words that way, isn't there? There is. Do you know what the word is? Mm, there are several. Coining. Yeah, that's not quite what I wanted. Anyway, um, I wanted something more specific. Uh, so deprecate, eliminate the use of element text where it isn't vital. That's probably only for expressions. There's some in the UI, I think, too, where the text of the dialogues can be in a text field or something. Yeah, and that's actually the case I'm, I, that, that prompted this bug Oh, <laughs> issue um, in C mutal. Oh, C mutal. Uh, so currently, C mutal uses element text to let you specify the text of a control, but in Wix in Wix four or C mutal v four, um, there's there are several. Well, there are always many ways to specify the text of a control uh, because C mutal supports you know loc strings and getting it from a string resource and all that. Um, and in four. Sean added the, the idea of conditional text, where you could have an expression that says, if this expression is true, then use this text, which is great because it means you can move a lot of code out of your, say, bootstrapper application mm -hmm. into the theme, which is, I love it. It's, it's great. But so we have this mix now where you can support uh, body, the element text is the, the text of the control, or it's child elements. And I ran into a case when I added support for command links where I had to add another element, another child element. Um, and then we get into this weird state where we have to say, well, if there are some children, then then only parse the children and don't try to look at the element text, which just seems weird. Um, and Sean and I had a thread on uh, the pull request where I was cleaning up a bug introduced by this problem, um, and I just right. yeah okay fine let's just, we should talk okay. about it. So this I think needs to turn into a whip and we have to talk about it because I don't think we're going to come to a design decision here. Um, in triage, I, I, I get what you're saying. I think it, it's a this could be an issue we can discuss about. Yeah. Uh, do you want That's this in three eleven or is this a three X thing? No 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 no. no. No, I'm not trying to make any any major changes at all. So you just wanted this. an issue to hang a whip off of, potentially. Well, I wasn't actually planning on writing a whip, but apparently that's what I'm doing. Um, well, I, so, I don't really know what you want to do. I, I'm, I'm I, unclear no, of what the proposal is. Uh, currently, I, I have two proposals. One, CMutal should drop the use of, of element text for, for specifying control text. All right, so we can do that in four. Yeah, it'll make migration um, that much harder, but okay. Well, and that's why I didn't, you know, already do it, um, because because it is a pain if you're not using the conditional stuff, um, or you're not using command links where you need more than one type of of text. Of text then yeah, it's it, it it works today. Um, so yeah, that's that's worth a discussion. Um, separately. I'd, I'd like to look at, you know, are there other areas where, where we do it? Also in Themutal, or specifically in Themutal, the, you know, there is a point at which we could get rid of, of having Themutal parse XML. You know, we could come mm -hmm. up with a, you yeah, know, a pilot data yeah. something or something or something. Yeah, protocol buffers, something like that where, where you know, we don't have to <laughs> write a fair bit of code just to handle XML parsing. 
Yeah. Um, so Element Text is one of those you know, weird things because it's pretty much XML specific. You know, you don't have Element Text in JSON, right? For example. Um, all right. So I'm still unclear exactly what you want to go with this. Okay. How about I just open this in four and assign it to myself? Sounds great. And we can discuss from there. I'm, I, I yeah. let's see. I, I can see lots of different directions this going. I don't know which one you're picking, so let's go do that. Yeah, I haven't picked anything yet. Ah, that that, that probably explains part of my 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 wanderings. Yep. Cool. I think that's all of that. So Doma triage, moving forward. Dun, da, da, da. Pull request review. All right, this we're going back. On the agenda. Huh? I haven't put pull request review. Should I, I thought, should I have triage slash pull request review? Like, as what I probably should put as an agenda. It hasn't actually ever been on the agenda. Oh. Um, it's just, it's always kind of been hanging out there. I don't know. Robert's Rules of Order. I don't know if we should do it <laughs> on the agenda. Uh, we can skip it if people want, but I think this is going to be an interesting one for us to walk through. Um, yeah, agreed. <laughs> so, uh, forget Robert's Rules. Uh, let's see. So, so, what the issue is, this is trying to go back to the way Burn was before the clean room was introduced to get Burn to grab a hold of a handle to itself um, and, use, and use that handle to itself to extract the attached container instead of um, just reading the file out independently, which was a nice cleanup in the container at the time because there's all this, not all this, there's a block of extra code that was kind of arbitrary, but it turns out that that was holding on, the handle's holding on to the executable to make sure that it didn't get whacked. Um, when the update bundle, the, the, the old bundle that downloaded the new one tries to delete the file as it exits to clean up after itself. If all that makes sense. Uh, and so this is attempting to put the code back that we did that was essentially there before. So move us back to the world where it was before source engine. So mm -hmm. previously, sorry, I'm I'm uh, I'm not terribly familiar with all the update machinations. If oh, if this change is just to basically lock the file so it can't get deleted, um, whatever cleans up. So it shouldn't lock it. It should just hope it. I haven't seen the code, but it should just hold it open um, so that it can read from it. But as long as it doesn't, it, it can't lock it for um, write or for delete because it's the yeah. same as skill it's running, which means that the old process will be able to move the file into temp and schedule it for deletion on reboot. So things will still get cleaned up correctly. OK. Okay, but was, the, the important cool. part is that the currently running bundle will have a handle to its attached container and will successfully install the the yeah uh, yeah so that it gets to the end. And if it opens the handle correctly, which is the thing that I'm looking for most, um, it okay. So so this is just a, a general property of deletion using the deutil functions to to uh, okay. I can't delete it because it's open. Therefore, I will you know do the move and and delete on reboot track. Correct. There's a flag you okay. can pass okay. to the deutil delete that yep. can say, if you can't delete it, go ahead and schedule it for deletion. All right. Okay. All cool. I just wanted to make sure that, that we weren't leaving the, the file in, in the package cache and never to be cleaned up. No. It is. Cool. It will be cleaned up. So, okay. th so this, my understanding, based on the little bit that I saw from Sean in email, is that this is going to bring back the code that it used to, which is what this looks like already here. There's an alternative here that we could try to get to a place where we change it, we, we change the mechanism around such that the when a bundle is launched in update mode, it deletes itself. It essentially does the cleanup itself instead of the other bundle doing it for it. Um, that will create a break in the update world for a little while until you get across that version change. Um, so I'm, I'm, I didn't think fully through the, the ability to do that way. 
right? And Jacob brings up that you know that could be 3.11 or better for us. So I, I personally think that this is definitely the way to go in 3.10.3. It essentially brings back the behavior we had before uh, the clean room removed it, um, incorrectly removed it. Um, and then in 4, we can reevaluate the way that this works because as people pointed out, there still is this potential race condition where the old bundle waits for idle input or like five seconds for the new bundle to start and get to a point where it's running, which means for clean room, it's get the bundle, get in the clean room, start the UI, and, or get that process started to get the hold of the handle. All that has to happen within five seconds, which isn't a problem, um, but it, um, it, it, it does create a little race. There's also the downside that I believe Sean pointed out that this, the new, because the clean room, the bundle, that's running, the uh, update bundle, um, the updated bundle, the new bundle, what do you call these things sometimes, the updated bundle, um, uh, where was I going, um, I just lost my train of thought, crash, <laughs> too many late nights right now, anyway, so I think this is the right way to go for 3.10.3, and then we can revisit um, how to do this in 3 in, in 4, I think. I don't think we should do this in 3x. I don't think we should change this in a big way in 3x. Um, and there will also be a break in the update when you go from 4 to 3. If we change anything, we'll have to think about what we do, you know, to break to um, if we're going to end up leaving a file behind in that window or whatever. <sighs> Sorry. Not very cohesive thoughts. Let's see if the code is more cohesive than my speaking has been at the moment. So most of this is just, just shuttling down the the handle to the engine, which is the source, is what he's calling it now, instead of just the engine. And we probably don't need the UX anymore. Um, and we don't need the UX anymore, probably because we don't have to use the variables to find the file. Acquired through source engine. So extract container. If we acquired through source, I have to go see what that is. Do, 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 looking for the path. So acquire container payload. All right, here we go. This almost looks like the same comment as it's broken up. If the container is attached to the source executable and the container path points to the source process executable, right? We need both of those then use the source engine file handle since it may have been deleted or moved since initialization. That's right. Container primary, shim vault, right. Look at all that to figure it out. And the invalid handles. It's all best effort since in the worst case we open a new handle to the container. Right. Which means it won't uh, and that's what the acquired through source engine means. In an update case, of course, this will be too late and it won't work. In other cases, it might work. Um, in, you know, in a non-update case, it might work. Um, to do verify the container's actually attached, I think we're probably all right. File exists locally, so use that. Hey, look, a comma. Well, someone's fixing their comments as they in here. <laughs> all right, acquired through source engine. Oh, right. Sean, this was all here before. Was this other parts of code that was in the old code that had to come back? No, I, okay. What are we doing here? Fake progress for the size of the container? Copy the source full path to the payload. Oh, right. So now we have to move the attached container from the source to wherever we're at. But why do we need this? Did we just not have progress for this before? Like, 
So this is almost a feature then, isn't it? I mean, this is a, hey, look, you're getting more progress than you used to. Leaves more potential. People should be okay. Uh, so somehow get a new message that they haven't gotten before if they're using an attached container. Yeah, they're going to get. Um, I'm a little. Attached containers would never get into this method because we never planned the acquire. So, are, but are we sending new messages now? I mean, we're sending an additional message for the attached container that we did not send in the past, right? That's the net result of this. Right. So if anybody was carefully watching their payloads on their acquire begin, they're going to get very confused when they see this payload come through. It's going to be like, I've never got this payload before. And now they're getting it. Not that I know anybody that treats their payloads that way, but I don't know that you couldn't. them now. We just have a handle to the attached container. And this is sending progress for the container itself, right? This is progress for acquiring the container itself. But I'm, I'm cu curious, wh what do we have to acquire for the attached container? We already have the executable. It's on disk. We've opened it. We don't actually have to do anything. Like It's not like we're copying it somewhere or anything. We just have a handle to it. So it's essentially free. Right? It's not like there's no progress sent for the attached container because the attached container doesn't cost anything. Because we never actually acquire a container, we only acquire what's in it. Well, no, we do acquire. We, we you can have detached containers, which then you do have to download the container before. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Getting right. the payloads on it. and there's work there. Like getting stuff out of a container takes work. So it's decompression work. But right. The attached containers on the XE, and the XE is already on disk or wherever it's at, which means there's before there's no progress for it. It was like I I already had the attached container. There's no nothing happened. During plan, we don't know where we're getting the container from. We'd have to put logic into the plan to know that it's actually coming from the source engine. I'm missing something there of where the progress Going through the search paths, yep, trying to find itself. But once it finds the attached container, it has the file. There's no more act progress. Well, we can't find it. Is there a case where we actually download the attached container, I guess? So if you have a if you have the bundle without its attached container, it's been stripped, you know, because you've been cached or whatever, and then you're like, oh, I need the original source for some reason. Is that the progress you're sending here, Sean? This is the case that you're trying to cover, where it then has to turn on and go get the that container again. All right. Do you have a mic, Sean? This is getting 
back and forth. All right. We will unmute the Sean. Hopefully he can kind of walk me through this faster. Can you hear me? Yes. Awesome. So, yeah, I mean, theoretically, the BA could make it to where the engine has to download this container. That's true, right? Because it's like it's the the container is in the uh, it, it, sorry the bundle is in the package cache and it needs a attached container, so it has to go get it from somewhere, right? Right. <laughs> And that's what this, but this isn't doing that. Well, is this there is another scenario where it does go do that. Oh, right, where it's not acquired through the source engine. Right. Right. It's not acquired from the source engine. So, right. So the source doesn't have it. It's going and getting it. So if it did, then you're getting this progress. If it didn't, I see. So you're saying. So let me play this back. So let's say it bundles in the package cache, which means the attached containers have been stripped. So, and then, so in that case, you would get progress for the attached container because you'd have to go resolve it, right? right? But in the case where if you launched it for the first time and the attached container was already present, you would not have gotten progress for the attached container at that time. And so you're getting different progresses based on whether the attached container was attached or not. Right. And this is normalizing those two. Right. So it is kind of a feature. It is kind of new. Now you're saying that we have to go back to plan to change this? So what do we have to change in plan? Like from the behavior it's doing to that Burn has today, I, I, I get that you know you weren't getting progress for a task container if we found it already. Why does plan have to change? So plan is looking at the container and it's seeing is it actually attached and right now that's false because it's actually it's not the currently running engine is the clean room engine right so it never but finds the attached one right so actually we already have a behavior change today you're where, getting progress for the attached container all the time now well Right. Yes. The plan. The plan is you planning are. progress. Sorry. The plan is planning progress for the attached container all the time. There's actually a bug in that it's not sending progress every time. So before this pull request, but with the clean room, mm -hmm. it's actually copying the whole engine, or at least the stripped part of the engine, as the container. So it, it's actually going inside of that if copy, then it's going to copy the stripped down part of the engine and then get the container from the copy. I see. So it was slower, too. So I guess what we could do is, in plan, see if it really is attached to the original source bundle. Mm -hmm. And then we could set actually attached to true at that point, And then it would go through the old behavior. At least in this acquire part, it would never go through acquire because we would know we already have it through the handle. So, so this is a fixing a bug that was introduced in clean room in the progress. Bob, do you have a feel for which way we should go on that? Either way, like should we should we send progress or should we try to do more work to not to to not send the progress? In the, Basically, do we fix plan, or do we take this fix and execute to send progress for the attached container? Do you have any gut feeling? No. I mean, either way, it's a change of behavior, right? Yes. From 3.10.1. Um, well, the other way wouldn't be a change in behavior. Because we would be doing the work. Change plan. We, yeah, we would. Well, no, we would be doing the work to make the plan look like it did, behave the way it did in 310. And I mean, yeah, uh, yeah, on the engine side, it's doing something different. But as far as the BA can tell, it wouldn't be able to tell the difference between 310.1 and 310.3. I'm, I'm, I would lean toward no observable difference, um, as long as it didn't 
you know, make the the engine work too much harder or be a bigger change. In in the you know in the dot releases, I'm all about minimizing <laughs> minimizing risk and minimizing change. And if those are in conflict, well, too bad. How hard is it going to be to tell in plan whether it's actually attached or not? We'll already have the handle, right? Because the handle's grabbed right away. Right. So we'll already know if we're already in this mode, right? We just have to refactor the section code to where plan could call the same thing. Because inside of the section code, it's also trying to figure out whether the container is actually attached or not. But if we're in clean room, do we actually, do we, all right, well, what if it didn't actually check if the attached container was there in plan? If it goes, look, I'm in a situation where the attached container should be here in plan, right? Because it goes, I'm in clean room, that means the guy outside should have the attached container, right? And so... He, he behaves that way, and then when that's not true, then it falls back to the, oh, well, I can't find the attached container code anyway, right? And that, that's the normal path, right? So if we do that, then we can't really check whether the path is the exact same as the source bundle path, because we won't have the full path inside a plan. It's just going to be the exe name, just the file name. Right. Uh, which was worse. I don't have a good feel for how the code is going to be. The plan code is going to get churned. Well, basically, it's going to have to look at the file handle, parse the PE header, and see what's there. Uh, you. Yeah, this see, this is why I'm not really excited about having a plan <laughs> either. But thinking, Sean, obviously, a, a, a BA should not, you know, should should be able to handle this without without a problem, right? Yeah, this is this because is yeah, just notification, right? And it, you would have got it anyway if you hit a case where the attached container is missing. <laughs> right, you're in a stripped. Okay. Yeah. If you're in a stripped engine, you would have got a notification like this anyway. Right. right, Sean? Right. Yeah, okay, good. I just hear I'm making the statement, but... Uh... I'm leaning towards this fix versus trying to change plan around. Because I don't really want plan doing a bunch of this guy out. Comments, thoughts. Yeah, actually, that's really important. That's yeah. plan needs to be plan needs to be you know uh, as near instantaneous as possible because most of the time in, in UI in full UI anyway, your detect happens and then users go into the wizard and then they click install or whatever and plan happens and apply begins before you get the elevation prompt. So plan has to be really fast. Well, we, we could do a detect if that's the issue. We could detect whether the attached container is attached. And no, at that point in time. I mean, it's really all about setting that F actually attached Boolean on the container. You know, I, I like that better. I think setting that in detect is probably a good thing. Basically, setting it as close to the point at which we set the handle. Ish. Mm, maybe not as close, but something like that. I think I think setting that earlier will make this code a little less complicated. Right, because it'll be done early. All right, we have detected, and we now know there actually is an attached container. 
that sounds like something we should do in um, detect. Because you can imagine one day us giving it to the BA and saying, hey, by the way, you know your attached container is actually here. Um, not necessarily, but you could imagine us doing that. I think we should go that way. Thoughts? Yes, no, maybe? The bench is all like, I have no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> I don't have John going plus one or minus one. So I think it would be good if we set the bit. Where is that bit? That's up here. It's one of those four things that that guy was checking. If it's container and it's primary and it's actually attached. So it's that actually attached that would be Where does it get set? In section. When it, the bundle is parsing its PE header and stuff. So I didn't touch that code. So wait, then shouldn't that be set very early then? It's actually set too early. <laughs> we don't have the handle to the source process. Oh, we, right. It needs to be overridden in the source. Right, it needs to be changed. Oh, that's going to be kind of weird. Because it's going to say, is it attach actually attached again? It's going to be, well... Yeah, no, it's not. No, it's not actually attached. But here's this handle that will get it for you. Where do we get the handle? I haven't seen that code yet, have I? No, it's in core. Yeah. And this is in boot. to grab a hold of the engine and it will or it might not it'll try <laughs> it doesn't it'll still be invalid handle and that's all good I mean it is what it is and here's where you want to change the actually attached right but you don't because that's in boot <laughs> so you don't want to turn around and go and doing a whole lot more disk IO while burn is trying to start up um, which would go into means trying to do this and detect oh, this is getting too crazy um, I think we're falling into the same spot that Sean did already <laughs> which isn't unusual I mean, there's been a couple of things where I've said no 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 Sean that's all wrong and then John's like, well, how about this instead? But I was like, no, no, that's worse. And he's like, well, how about this instead? I was like, no, no, that's worse. Let's do it this way. He's like, well, I could do this. I was like, no, that's worse. All right, I guess we're back where we were at the beginning. Um, I can kind of see how this is the least worse options. <sighs> totally be worth it in four to walk through everything and clean it all up. Straighten it out. Not clean it up. It's straighten it out. It's just a little twisted. Because we're trying to work our way through all these previous design decisions that didn't think about, hey, Deal all hijacking your route can happen. What? Um, I don't know. I I think I've I've landed back to here. Bob, I, I think it's. It sounds like it's the you know least disruptive. 
Yeah. I mean, this is kind of hitting the, oh, a little bit of behavior change, but the alternatives are much more churn inside the engine that's less confidence-inspiring. Right? That's really what it comes down to. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. Probably our hardest pull request yet. Yeah? I'm going to go through it again, and then we'll probably take it and get it in 3.10.3. <sighs> All right. On that happy note, <laughs> uh, questions, comments, things people want to talk about? This is a little bit longer than I anticipated, but we got a pull request of the big thing. I think the two weeks actually worked out all right. I mean, we had some email discussion to cover the thing that kind of came up, and that seemed to go all right. Uh, pushed us into this meeting, and we had all the data to cover this meeting in two weeks. I felt pretty good about that. Um, our bug list wasn't horrible um, and or unmanageable, and we got through that in pretty good timing. I think if we had a pull request that wasn't as complex or had so many different things to consider in it um, in one go, or if I had time maybe to pre-review it and kind of walk through the overview instead of trying to learn it as I was going, that might have gone better. So I am trying to keep these meetings to a half hour instead of Sorry, a, an hour instead of the, every two weeks, an hour meeting instead of an hour and 15 that we're closing in right now. Um, so uh, the question is about 3.10.3 release. Uh, so Jacob or John is asking 3.10.3, and Jacob's right. We're trying to get from the GDI plus something that makes sense um, about what's uh, going on with their recommendation of uses to have avoiding it vappy or I, I'm, I'm still not clear exactly what their recommendation was but the fact that they made one was encouraging so we're gonna still push on that honestly these other bug fixes are I'm glad we found them in the window that we found them I'm glad we're taking them but WinForms is still the one that's I think the huge blocker for people um, although this update bug, I mean, they're all bad. So, I mean, I'm, I'm glad we're kind of getting them worked out, but really the thing we need to get fixed is the WinForms thing. I don't think us coming out with another uh, 3.10 without the WinForms thing is going to help a lot of people um, right now. So I'm still pushing. And we're still making progress on the GDI side. I guess that's the other thing. When we hit, <laughs> we've been escalated to the next level. So as long as that GDI plus thing keeps moving, I'm still encouraged. We're still rolling on it. So that's a very long-winded answer to um, your thing of as soon as we can. I'm hope. I guess I'm still hopeful that we're going to get a workaround. That's what I'm hope, waiting for. Heath is asking. There's a number of PRs open for 311. We'd like to get in before build. So before the build, so we can put which build the 311 build, the next 311 build. Well, we'll do a 311 build when there's enough changes. I don't know that we've taken any changes uh, lately. So yeah, we can do that. Uh, get Heath, get your four changes out. I think that's probably going to be the thing that blocks them if we're going to hold to that. We don't want to take pull requests in three without the fixes in four, so I think that'll be the big thing um, for those other two. So go ahead and get your fixes to four and then they'll roll into and then Bob or someone or I can get them into three. Um, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Right now, because we're not getting a lot of changes in 3.10 in 3.11, that we're not doing builds like every week because they'd be the same as the week before. Um, Bob, I think you said you'd take them, right? The the two of them? The the CA Yeah, everything thing. everything that we triaged. Yeah. Right. The things we triaged. And then the, the AI switch is the one or whatever it was, is the one that's that. There's four total. Oh, all right, there's another one. The lit change. Oh, the lit change is already in four, so uh I don't know, extensions in lit. I didn't have a problem with that, but yeah, no, I, I looked at it before, and, and the change broke the build. So you oh, said you right. updated it, and I'll yeah, take another pass. Okay, right. So, right, that, cool. Right, so, cool. Go look at all those again. Um, anything else? Ah, that was a good set of questions and comments. I think we got through them all. Um, I will... I don't know what I would do. Picking that, that pull request took a lot of time. I was looking at the clock when we started, and I'm like, oh, if we get through this quickly, then be no problem. And then we hit, of course, lots of questions. So I think we'll be closer to an hour in general. Um, anything else you want to talk about?
good, bad, the other. Um, so what do we got going on? We got a lot going on. All kinds of stuff, run around, trying to figure out 3.11 being Visual Studio, next, 3.10.3 being a couple more bug fixes than we thought, uh, breakages due to clean room, and then um, the big the big WinForms thing. Hopefully we get that. All right, anything else? I think we're doing all right. Whew, good day. All right, so given all that, I think we're good. So the next meeting is two weeks from now. We'll hold to this pattern and see how it goes. So that would be the 22nd of March. That works for everybody. We'll see you guys then. Two weeks, two Tuesdays from now, as my son would say. Till then, you guys have a good one. Later.